I think it's time to finish up this printer stand. With all three coats of the polyurethane completely dry, I like to buff it out. And I, I just like to use a crinkled up piece of craft paper, like a paper bag works really well for this. You just kind of loosely crinkle it up and it sort of acts as a really fine sandpaper. And what this does is it just kind of buffs it out, gives it a nice smooth finish and removes any little nibs or dust particles that you can kind of feel. And that polyurethane was a satin polyurethane, but I find that it actually looks pretty flat until you do this, and then you can kind of buff it up to a little bit more luster. I can finally screw this top in place. The challenge here is that my drill just barely fits. So I think what's gonna help is to pre-drill a couple of holes in here and then get the screws started. Yeah, I probably don't need this many screws. Actually, I could probably just put in two, one here and one here. All right, turns out I can't fit that. I just can't fit that in there. So I'm gonna have to use this right angle attachment. So the way this works is goes in like that. And bit goes in there. It's a little awkward to use, but sometimes it's about the only thing that'll get the job done. Yeah, I think two screws is all that needs. It's not like this is gonna be pulled on a lot. Okay, let's get these doors put together. So this is my point driver thing. It drives in these little bitty points. It's a whole stack of them right there. They're all kind of glued together just like, like brads or pins are for the pin nailer. This isn't pneumatic, it's just like a staple gun or something. So this, opens up there and then these little points, whoops, drop down in there. I think I got this one going the wrong way. Okay, I think that's it. And then that closes up also sounding really cool when you do that. What these are mainly for is for putting artwork in picture frames. So it's got a little adjustment knob here on the back to, that adjusts how far into the wood they shoot. I'll show you. So here's my painted black Panels. I'll drop those into the rabbit. That first one isn't going in very far, so I think I'm going to increase the point depth a little bit. Let's see how that works. Yeah, like that. I'm so glad I painted these black. I think that looks fantastic. And then with these weird little knobs, we'll add a nice little splash of color. By the way, is anybody else obsessed with Better Call Saul? Is that like the best show on TV ever since, well, since Breaking Bad? If you do watch Better Call Saul, let me know what do you think is gonna be the fate of Kim at the end of the season, or at the end of the series for that matter, because she's not in Breaking Bad. Here's my theory. Somehow she and Jimmy have a falling out and they get separated. Or she might get too involved in his business and have to leave. But I think they're gonna meet back up in the future, <clears throat> in the future, in the Gene timeline. Because, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, didn't Gene relocate to 
Nebraska. And in this week's episode, we have a flashback to Kim as a child and the license plate was Nebraska. That's just a theory. A better call Saul theory. These overlay hinges always come with these little bumpers to stick on there to keep them from clanging. Always make sure you put these in place. I'm never really sure if they're meant to go on the door or on the cabinet. To me, it makes more sense to have them on the door because you're likely to hit them taking things in and out of the cabinet, but I don't know. Well, it still clangs, but that's just these panels in there rattling. Some furniture just has an audio component to it. You know, another thought I had about these was to, after I secured those in there, to just get a piece of quarter round. You know, it's like a dowel that's cut into four sections. You could probably even do it yourself. And then just glue that in there. It's like, like a molding trim. But I'm not going to worry about it. There. It's done. I gotta say, I kinda like this. I think it's gonna look nice up in the office. I like that you can just kind of sort of see through there, but not really. Shh, don't look at the back. Well, I still need to take a glamour shot of this so I can put that on. Wow, that is bright. It's like sun is reflecting right off the windshield of my truck. I'll just hide right here behind the camera. <laughs> I gotta take a glamour shot of this that's gonna go on in my plans. And then also I gotta take a shot for the thumbnail to the video. And I'll bet you every single YouTuber, this is one of the things that we struggle with on every single video is a thumbnail and coming up with a good one. My theory is that taking a picture of the entire project to put on the thumbnail is not really a good idea. At least I know when I'm scrolling through videos and I see a thumbnail of the whole project, I can kind of look at that and just think, Okay, that's interesting, I see how it's made, and then I can move on. I don't really need to watch the video because I've seen the whole project, you know what I mean? I mean, maybe I'm wrong. For me, it makes more sense and adds a little bit of drama to the thumbnail to just take a, a nice close-up detail shot or something, I don't know. But you know what? I'm gonna put it on the thumbnail of this video you're watching right now, which means you've already seen that thumbnail, and I'm curious if the thumbnail alone was enough to get you to watch this video. Well, here's the thumbnail shot I decided to go with. I think I'm just gonna crop it down to this area right there. One thing I did was I brought over this light and I have it shining through the back, just so you can see that grid a little bit better. This project actually turned out to be kind of a difficult one to photograph and to just kind of figure out a good angle where it just didn't look like a, a square thing. And another problem with shooting furniture, especially taller-ish tables, is that they just look horrible if you shoot the whole thing and put it in the thumbnail you know, rectangle. So you really have to get a detail on that. One thing I really recommend for photographs is one of these. This is a polarizing filter. Polarizing filter has two uses. One, it can eliminate reflections on glass or water depending on the angle and it has a little twist on here so you can adjust it. But the main reason to use it is to increase the overall saturation of the colors in your photograph. And I've used these for years. I think it's the, the best filter you can use whenever you're taking pictures of projects. But again, it only works if the light is angled. If it's like directly ahead, above, or directly in front, it, it will have no effect whatsoever. So this is what the photo looks like when I bring it in just raw from the camera. And so the first thing I wanted to do for this thumbnail was crop it in a lot tighter. I also didn't like 
I almost always have to adjust the levels first thing. So there's what it looks like with the levels adjusted. That just means increasing the highlights and making the blacks a little bit blacker. It just overall kind of improves the contrast. Then I wanted to brighten up that wood tone a little bit with the vibrance and saturation. You can tell there it is without it. Here it is with it on. The problem with that is that it made my hand kind of, I don't know, magenta colored. So I had to color correct just by hand there. And that looks a little bit better there. And then after that, I can drop in my text that I've been using for the past week and a half, put my logo down there in the corner, and this thumbnail is ready to go. This was actually a really, really easy thumbnail. A lot of them are much more involved than this. I haven't done my glamour shot yet for the plans. I'll probably do that once I move it up into the office so I can actually show it in its environment. That's more of like a editorial shot. It's meant to show exactly what the thing is so that when people look at the plans, they get an idea of actually what the project is supposed to look like, whereas the thumbnail thumbnail needs to be a little bit more stylized. So I'll show this to you in a future video once it's moved up into the office and I got all the things in it and we'll see how it's working out. Tomorrow I want to get started designing that weight bench. I'm still kind of up in the air about what I want to do with it, but I know that's a project that I want to pursue. So until then, I'll see you guys tomorrow.